Hi, I'm Li Hao. Let's talk about some examples of using Svelte actions. And today let's take a look at one example, which is use viewports. So we're going to write one actions that will allow us to uh, know that whether an element is, has entered the viewports or has exited the viewports. Right? So probably it'll be something uh, quick and easy, and we can take a look at how we can do that using Svelte actions. So um, over here, we're going to have uh, one um, example, uh, hash, uh, header one tag over here. I think I'm just going to name it hello world simply. I'll just remove all this. And let's going to have this um, actions called use viewport. And let's design how this use viewport actions would work. So I would want this use viewport to be just like this, but when um, and then we by using this viewports probably it will give me some events like some uh, like on um, enter viewport and on exit viewport. So having these two actions, uh, two events, and I can listen to it and I can handle I I can uh, do things with it. So right now I'm just gonna print out enter and. Exit, right? So um, if this is the first time you're watching uh, my video about Svelte Actions, probably you can take a look at this video on the top right corner where I talk about how you can create events using Svelte Actions. So basically these actions view use viewports will create two events, which is one is the enter viewport, the other will be exit viewports whenever my elements is entering or exiting the viewport. Sorry, let me adjust this. Okay, so let's implement this um, action. So I'm going to create a new file called view, uh, use viewport action.js. And I'm going to define this use, uh, this viewport action. So an action is a function that takes in an two parameters and elements and the params. So in this case, we're not expecting to take in any params. So we're going to just leave it as element. And it should return an object that has two methods. One is updates, one is destroy. If you're not taking any uh, parameters, then you wouldn't expect that the parameters will be updated. So we can ignore the update method, but implement the destroy method. Right, so this func method will be called whenever the element is destroyed. So I'm going to just export default uh, this action and I'm going to import it from here. Uh, use viewport action.js. Right, so now we are going to implement uh, the action. Right, so I'm going to use um, an intersection observer to do it for me. So probably I can create an intersection observer new intersection observer and the constructor of intersection observer should give me uh should be taking in an callback function whenever and any elements that is observing is enter or exit the viewports right so this is something i will have to fill up later on and the action itself will be this function will be called whenever this element is mounted on the screen and at that time, we'll probably will want to observe this element to see whether it's entering or exiting the viewports. And once this element is removed from the DOM, we probably will want to get tell the observer to unobserve this element. Right. And now let's fill up the callback function. Right. So this intersection observer takes in a callback function that will have an entries of element where each of the elements uh, would be either entering or exiting the viewport. Right? So what we need to do is to loop through these entries. So for each entry. And in each entry, it has two um, properties. One is the entry dot is intersecting, telling us that whether this element is intersecting, uh, which is true if it's within a viewport or false, it's not within a viewport. Right, and we have entry.target, which is the element that um, 
is within this entry. So uh, what we're going to do here is that we are going to dispatch a custom event when the on the element itself whenever um, it's intersecting or depending whether it's intersecting or not, right? So I'm going to call dispatch event over here. I'm going to create a new custom event, right? So this uh, event will be depending whether it's intersecting or not. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to def define a variable called event name. And if it's intersecting, which means it's within a viewport, I'm going to dispatch an event called enter viewports, which is this one, right? I'm going to copy it over, I'm going to paste it in here. And if it's, ex it is not, which means that it's just exceeding the view, I'm going to copy this, which is exit viewports event, right? So entries will have only the elements that has just triggered the intersection observer. So it's either just entering or just exiting, right? Uh, so that's why uh, whether to know whether it's exiting or enter entering based on this flag. And so that will depend on this flag, will depend on what events that we're dispatching. And I'm going to copy this event name. I'm going to paste it in the custom event, right? And I think that's it. That's, that's easy, right? Um, so to test it out, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create some, you know, some placeholder elements that we can push this uh, hello world header down. And then we can scroll up and down to see where the, like the intersection observer is being, uh, the enter viewport or exit viewport events being triggered. All right, so I'm going to create div uh, style with its like um, maybe height of 200 pixels and background of red. Uh, I'm going to copy a few probably just to know that it's different. I'm going to say blue and green. Go copy a few over this and paste a few at the bottom as well. Okay, so let's take a look at the console, right? Uh, once at, at the first when we're uh, adding this um, use viewport actions. The moment that we start observing, probably we we'll need to know also whether the element is entering or exiting, or is like within or outside of the viewport. So this is when the exit viewport is being triggered the first time, right? It depends on whether you want it. Probably you have to handle it so that you know whether you are you should be doing something or not, right? And as you scroll, um, once we see that hello world is entering the viewport, you see that enter. And then if we scroll past it, exit, right? Coming back, enter and exit, right? Yeah, that's that's pretty easy, right? I mean, that's that's about a use viewport action. So before we end this, I'm gonna add a few tweaks to my uh, viewport actions, which is over here, as you can see that we created an intersection observer uh, once we, like at the begin, like in the entry of this module, uh, what I mean is that when I import this action, whether or not I'm starting to observe an element, uh, I am initializing a new intersection observer at the very beginning, right? So even I'm not using it at all, it's it's being created, right? Um, I can either create a new intersection observer every time for each of the elements that I'm uh, monitoring. I could use just one instance of it. And I feel like just using one is good because you know it's designed to observing multiple elements at the same time. But I wouldn't want to start initializing this intersection observer uh, right at the start, right before I'm observing anything. Probably you can see where I'm coming from. What I want is that this intersection observer is being lazily initialized. So let's do that right now. So um, I can define this intersection observer um, at the very beginning, but um, I would create another function called initialize intersection observer, which I would initialize it over here, right? And uh, there, there's a few ways, multiple ways of doing this. Uh, one is that I can keep calling this over here many, many times, but within this function, I would check that if it's defined or uh, written early, right? 
uh, a di- another way of doing it would be not checking it over here but you know uh, if it's not defined then I will initialize it right I think either way is fine uh, it depends on how uh, how you like to um, write it right um, but for me my personal preference is that if I'm doing if I name my function called initialize intersection observer then probably I will check whether it's defined first before I initialize it right uh, it doesn't make sense for me to call this initialize many many times uh, because it should be call it once right but if I want to do it the other way where I check within itself then uh, I in this case right um, written then I would call it like ensure intersection observer initialize uh, is initialize right so it's just me where I'm particular about the name of the function that because it carries some meaning about how you should use it and yeah this is this is my uh, pet peeves about names and how it should behaves right so either way if it's ensure then yeah you can call it multiple times and if it's initialized then you return earlier but it probably it's not even is initialized it's just ensure that intersection observer right ensure that it's it's there uh, but if i call it initialize then i will check if it's initialized first before i call it right this way we have our intersection observer being lazily initialized so meaning um if you don't use uh the intersection observer at all uh, which means you the element that has a use viewport is not mounted at all, then it's not initialized, right? You are not creating a new instance that is doing nothing, right? That's lying over there and doing nothing, right? So uh, that's about it. That's about today. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, anything that you think that you can improve on, uh, any doubts, please comment down below. And I'm going to sneak peek about what is the next video that is going to come out because it's going to be somewhat related with this use viewport, which is I'm going to use do use this action to implement a use uh, lazy load, which means that uh, if your element is, say, for example, like a dynamic component or it's, um, say, image, then I want to lazily load them whenever only the element is entering or exiting the viewports, right? So it will be an action that use another action. If you want to know how I'm going to do it, please subscribe to the video and you will get notified, right? Wait, hold on. I believe you need to click on that bell button at the, besides the subscribe so that you get notified, right? Anyway, please subscribe and turn on the notification. So see ya, bye-bye.